Welcome back. We are still on the topic statistics. In the previous video, we solved a question on drawing a bar chart for a given statistical data. In this video, we are going to solve another question. The question we have is, the frequency table shows the max of a class of 45 pupils in a science examination. So we have the max and the frequency. There are 45 pupils in the class. So it means that if we add all the frequencies, we are going to get 45. The question says that we should use the distribution to draw a bar chart. So we are going to use the data we have here to draw a bar chart. Then the second part says that a pupil is chosen at random from the class. What is the probability that the pupil obtained I, 7 max, II, 2 max, III, more than 6 max, and IV, less than 4 max? So in this video, we are going to combine what we have learned under statistics with what we have learned under probability to solve the question. As a reminder, I have made a whole playlist on probability. In that playlist, I explained the concept of probability and also solved some questions under probability. I will leave the link to the playlist on probability in the description of this video. So if you want to learn more about probability, you can follow the link and do so. Let's get back to our question. So we will begin by drawing the bar chart for the distribution. We have the data here. We have the max and their corresponding frequencies. We are going to draw our bar chart on the graph sheet we have here. We have the max on the horizontal axis and the frequency on the vertical axis. We have to choose a scale for our graph. Looking at the values we have for the frequencies, I'm going to choose a scale of 2 cm to 1 student. So on the frequency axis or on the number of students axis, 2 cm will be for 1 student. So we will use that to number our frequency axis, just as we can see here. We will now have to determine the width of the bars and the spaces that we are going to leave between them. In total, we have 10 bars, which is quite a lot. So you have to make sure that you are choosing the width of the bars and the spaces that, and the spaces between them such that all the 10 bars will fit on the graph sheets that you have. For this particular bar chart, I'm going to leave three minor divisions between the bars and each bar will also occupy seven minor divisions. So I'll leave three small boxes between the bars and each bar will occupy seven small boxes. So for the first one, I'll leave three small boxes and then the bar will occupy seven small boxes just as we can see here. That is for Mark 1 and the frequency is 7. So the height of the bar will be at 7. So this bar is for Mark 1. We move on to the next one which is 2. We will leave three small boxes. The bar will occupy seven small boxes and the height will be at six. So that is what we have here. This is for Mark 2. The next one is three. We will leave three small boxes. The bar will occupy seven small boxes and the height will be at four, like we have here. And this is for Mark 3. The next one is four. The frequency of 4 is 8, so the height of the bar will be at 8. The next one is 5. The frequency is also at 8, so the height of the bar will be at 8. And this is for 5. The next one is 6. The frequency will be at 2, so the height of the bar will be at 2, and this is for 6. The next one is 7. The frequency is 4. So the height of the bar will be at 4, and this is for Mark 7. The next one is 8, uh, the, and the frequency is at 3. So 
the height of the bar will be at 3 and this is for 8. The next one is 9 and the frequency is at 2. So the height of the bar will be at 2. Then the last one is 10 and the frequency is at 1. So you leave three small boxes like we have been doing all along and the bar will also occupy seven small boxes and the height will be at one. And this is for mark 10. Now, after you are done, you can add a little design to it for it to look nice, just as I have done here. So I'll add a little design to all the bars for it to look nice, like what we have here. Our bar chart should have a title and you get the title from the question. We were told from the question that the data given to us is the marks of 45 students in a science examination. So my title will be a bar chart showing the marks of 45 pupils in a science examination. So we are done with the first part of the question that is drawing a bar chart for the distribution. Let's move on to the second part of the question that involves probability. So we have the data here, the max and its corresponding frequencies. The first part of the question says that if we select a pupil at random from the class, we should find the probability that the pupil obtained a mark of 7. From the videos on probability, we learned that the probability that an event will occur is equal to the number of members in the event divided by the number of members in the sample space. For this particular question, we are selecting the student or the people from the class. So it means that our sample space is the class. The number of members in the sample space will be the number of pupils in the class. The question told us that there are 45 pupils in the class. So what it means is that the number of members in the sample space is equal to 45. Now, we have to find the number of members in this particular event. What is the event? The event is that the people obtained a mark of 7. So we will go to the table and we will find the number of students who obtained a mark of 7. And as we can clearly see from the table, the number of students who obtained a mark of 7 is 4. So the probability that a people obtained a mark of 7 will be equal to the number of people who obtained a mark of 7, which is 4, divided by the number of pupils in the class, which is 45. Let's move on to the next part of the question, which says that if we select a people from the class at random, we should find the probability that the people obtained a mark of 2. The people obtained a mark of 2. As we have seen here, the probability that an event will occur is equal to the number of members in that event divided by the number of members in the sample space. The sample space is the class, so the number of members in the sample space will be the number of pupils in the class, which is 45. The event is that the people obtained a mark of 2. So we will go to the table and we will find the number of pupils who obtained a mark of 2. So for a mark of 2, the number of pupils or the frequency is 6. So it means that the probability that a people obtained a mark of 2 will be equal to the number of people who obtained a mark of 2, which is 6, divided by the total number of people in the class, which is 45. And when we simplify this, we will get 2 divided by 15. Let's move on to the next part, which says that we should find the probability that a people obtained more than six marks. The people obtained more than six marks. I'm going to clean what we have here so that we can be able to identify this easily. We are going to find the probability that the people obtained more than six marks. Once again, the probability that this event will occur will be equal to the number of members in this event 
divided by the number of members in the sample space. For the number of members in the sample space, since we are selecting the people from the class, the, sam the number of members in the sample space will be equal to the number of people in the class, which is 45. Now we need to find the number of members in this event. The event is that the people obtained more than six marks. So what we have to do is that we will come to the table and we will select those who obtained more than six marks. If they obtained more than six marks, it means that they got seven, eight, nine, or ten. Because it is only those who got seven, eight, nine, or ten that had more than six marks. So we have to find the number of students who obtained seven, eight, nine, or ten. From the table, four students obtained seven, three students obtained eight, two students obtained nine, and one student obtained ten. So what this means is that if we select a pupil at random from the class, the probability that that pupil obtained more than six marks will be equal to four plus three plus two plus one divided by 45. And this will give us 10 divided by 45. When we simplify this, we are going to get 2 divided by 9. Let's move on to the last part of the question, which says that if we select a people at random from the class, we should find the probability that the people obtained less than 4 marks. I'm going to clean what we have done here so that you can see that very clearly. So I'll clean this and clean this one too. Okay, so we can now continue. We are going to find the probability that the people will obtain less than 4 marks. If the people obtain less than 4 marks, what it means is that they got either 1, 2, or 3. Because from our table, it is 1, 2, or 3 that are less than 4. So if the people obtained less than 4 marks, it means that they obtained 1, 2, or 3. From the table, 7 pupils obtained 1, 6 pupils obtained 2, and 4 pupils obtained 3. So it means that if we select a pupil at random from the class, the probability that the people obtain less than 4 marks will be equal to 7 plus 6 plus 4 divided by the total number of people in the class, which is 45. And this is equal to 17 divided by 45. We are now done with the solution to the question. As you can see, this solution involves application of probability. As I said already, I've already made a playlist where I explain the concept of probability and also solved some questions on it. I will leave the link to that playlist in the description of this video. So if you want to learn more about probability, you can follow the link and do so. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to this channel for more videos. So far, we have learned how to present statistical data using a pie chart and a bar chart. In the next video, we are going to learn how to use a histogram to present statistical data. Bye-bye.